Another important property of probability is the notion of statistical independence, which occurs when the outcome of one event is not influenced by whether or not another event has occurred. The typical case to illustrate statistical independence is with successful coin tosses or sorry, successive coin tosses or rolls of the dice. So when we when we flip a coin and we retrieve a heads, does that have any bearing on what we would retrieve on our next coin toss? Of course not. Each time we flip a coin, the probability of obtaining a heads or a tails remains the same at 50%. If that's the case, then we can say that the outcome of flipping a coin is independent of the other outcomes we retrieve when we flip the coin multiple times. When events are independent, we can use the multiplication rule of probability to calculate the probability of, ob of obtaining composite outcomes. In this notation, we use the caret to mean and. So P A caret B is read the probability of A and B. In the case when events are independent, then the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. And we can keep building these expressions as so long as the events are independent, then the probability of A and B and C is just the product of the independent probabilities. Let's look at some examples. Let's look at the probability of getting three heads in a row. We said that the probability of retrieving a head is independent of, the, of what the coin has done on previous flips. So in each case, the probability of receiving a head is exactly 50%. So in order to calculate the probability of three heads in a row, we simply multiply the probability of the three events. 50% times 50% times 50%, which is equal to 0 0.125. Let's look at the probability of drawing a king from a deck of cards. In each case, after we draw the king, we're going to replace it back into the deck in a random location. So the probability of receiving, of retrieving a king and then another king is simply the probability of receiving a king times the probability of receiving a king. There's four kings in the deck of 52 cards, so the probability is 4 over 52 times 4 over 52, which is equal to 1 over 169. What about the multiplication rule for dependent events? For example, what if we were to wonder what the probability of pulling a king and then an ace out of a deck was, but in between these steps, we don't replace the king back into the deck. In this case, we have to take into consideration the fact that we've reduced the number of cards in the deck. So here we have the probability of king times the probability of ace, but the probability of retrieving a, an ace after we've taken the king is no longer 4 and 52. We've removed one ace from the deck of cards, so we have to change the denominator to 51. After we calculate these probabilities, we see that the the probability of this composite event is 4 out of 663. When events are independent, we can use the addition rule for mutually exclusive events. Here, we're going to use the upside down caret to mean or. So the notation here is the probability of A or B occurring. When the events are mutually exclusive, then we can use the additive rule that just says the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B. And we can extend that into three events or more by simply adding these probabilities. Now this is only the case if the events that we are investigating here are mutually exclusive. That means that none of the outcomes that constitute event A can be an outcome, excuse me, that constitutes event B. So, for example, if event A was rolling a 1, 2, or 3, and event B was rolling a 4, 5, and 6, and we wanted to know what's the probability of A or B 
Well, we can simply add the two probabilities together. So we have 50% for event A plus 50% for event B. So the probability would equal 1. And think about what I just said. I said, what's the probability of rolling a 1 through 3 or a 4 through 6? Well, of course the probability is 1. Every time we roll the die, we will either receive, we are guaranteed to receive one of those two events. Now, what if instead that I asked, what is the probability of rolling a 1 or 2, that's event A, 1 or 2, and event B is 2 or 3? Well, these two events now are no longer mutually exclusive because both of the events include the outcome of rolling a 2. And therefore, we can't use this rule. What we have to do instead is use the addition rule for non-mutually exclusive events. And in this case, we're going to add the two probabilities of the events and we're going to subtract the intersection of the two events. We're going to subtract the probability that both of those events occur. This is, let's look at it in the case of our, uh, our, our die. The example that I just said. A is one or two. And B is two or three. So the probability of A is a third. The probability of B is a third. But what's the probability of A and B occurring at the same time? In order for A and B to occur at the same time, we would have had to roll a two. Because any other outcome of the die doesn't satisfy both events occurring. The probability of rolling a two is one sixth. So in order to calculate the probability of A or B occurring, we have to add up one third plus one third, that's the probability of A plus the probability of B, minus one sixth, the probability of A and B. And this is equal, in the end, to one-half.